Are you ready? When you hear applause, you're live. It's going to take about 10 seconds. If you're watching this as I upload, you'll see why the delay is here. Be patient. I'm going to turn off my camera. We are working on something new. <laughs> Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks, which, if you tuned in on my channel, the delay might not have made a lot of sense. We're now doing this live. So it is 4.59 in the morning. I am in Canton, Ohio. How many people work midnights? Remember I promised you when the correct view started that this was not going to be like other shows. You know what? A lot of people that listen to me are people that are not able to get to the news during the time that normal people do. Getting used to two cameras here. This is going to be a fun show. Um, it makes it difficult for a lot of people to get to the news. Well, guess what? The correct views and the media speaks have solved that problem for you. This is live. Uh, for those of you that are catching it later, my regular viewers, thanks so much for tuning in. The views have been really high lately, and I don't take any of you for granted. All right, guys, check this out. This is uh, Donna Anderson. U.S. consumers can blame Walmart for a new online sales tax when it passes. Now, it's absolutely, I don't think, a surprise to anyone listening to this that Walmart is the bringer of financial destruction to this country. It happens on a regular basis, and they've infected other countries too, I know. The problem is Walmart ushers in everything that hurts the country, including this. Now, when you buy something online, it's going to be ruined. And the end of this article is perhaps the best, so stay with me on this. Uh, Infowars, in an overwhelming show of support, the U.S. Senate voted 69 to 27 to let states collect sales tax on out-of-state online purchases. While the measure still has to make it through the House, you can bet your boots consumers will be paying online sales tax before the next holiday shopping season rolls around. And who do we have to thank for this tax increase? Of course, it's Walmart. Walmart is arguing that they are losing money to uh, online stores because people are not going into Walmart. This is ridiculous on a number of fronts. Um, let, let, for one thing, I, I'm going to go to the way that this, this concludes before I give my commentary on it because it's so good. If the consumer shops online, he may not currently be paying sales tax, it says, but he does have to pay shipping and handling charges. Yes, he can buy a little more for his money, but he still has the same spending limit, whatever he started with. But here's the kicker. The state tax, the state, excuse me, still gets its tax revenue from the trucking company that delivers the product and from the wages of the employee of the trucking company. In reality, there is no lost revenue. It merely comes from a different source. So if this measure passes, it will essentially be a tax increase floated on the backs of the consumer. It goes on. Not only that, Walmart is betting that when consumers see the new state tax added to their online shopping bills, they won't make the connection. They'll just hit delete and head to the nearest Walmart. Why is it you never hear of anything good coming from Walmart? It's kind of like when Bill Gates donates to a charity. He does so much good just so that you can't talk about the evil he does without looking like you yourself are evil. That is exactly what Walmart is doing. And the, the more we have it, the worse it gets. The more, the more cumbersome and bothersome it becomes. Things are fine now. I'm in a band and we order a lot of heavy things. Um, my, the amp I want to get. I can get the amp so much cheaper than I can the local music store. However, getting that thing sent to me almost evens it out. So this, this myth that what, you're, what, what they're going to do is they're not going to even the playing field. What they're going to do is hurt the economy by making everything cost more online, which is the reason that they, they're not going to the store anyhow. And it's also going to hurt people that do shopping online who live in more rural areas, which could be another ploy just to get people into the city, although I doubt they think of it that far ahead. 
Um, last, uh, last, the next thing I want to get to, is this is from Salon.com. After deadly police beating, witness cell phones have been confiscated. Now, when we did our movie, and if you get a chance, if you haven't already seen it, Hallie, even if you have, go and see it again, Becoming Paul Revere, we, um, we're going through Chicago, um, challenging the legitimacy of the eavesdropping law, pretty much. And, um, I had it in my mind that I was going to condom swallow my data card if the police bothered us. I'm going to say that before we start, because if you're going to film stuff, that's going to be the only possible way to get around it. Uh, also, um, you got to watch doing anything, anything through Google or anything. But if you can find uh, streaming from your phone, which as phones get better and better is going to become more and more common, that's another option. Because now the police are taking the data that you get when you film an incident, and they're saying that it's evidence let them get their own damn evidence. I mean, when I went to Bilderberg, um, there were cameras on me everywhere. Police filmed everything I did and said, just like we did to them. So there is absolutely no reason whatsoever that the public needs to be giving their cell phones to the police for evidence. I think we pay enough taxes that we can get them some kind of a little flip phone too. All right, um, I'm going to get to the article. These ads on this site, let me give an extreme thumbs down to Salon.com. This has been terrorizing me, so I'm a, awful. Following the death of father of four, David Sal Silva, last week, his family's attorneys are calling for police to release bystander video evidence that reportedly shows California's Kern County officers brutally beating a 33-year-old man. A video from a surveillance camera, which does not show the, close, the scene close up, has been released and shows the man repeatedly struck with a baton. Local press have, no, have also reported on details from a 911 call made in which witnesses Selena Quar, 34, said, quote, There is a man lying on the floor and your police officers are beating the expletive out of him and killed him. I have it all on video camera. We videotaped the whole thing. They shouldn't have well, I, another lesson, not only do you condom swallow your data card, you don't tell the police you filmed it. Officers say that they were responding to a call about an intoxicated man and that Silva had fought them. It goes on. Attorneys representing the Silva family expressed concern that police may tamper with video evidence and demanded that they be given access to any recordings of the lethal incident. Details emerged in Bakersfield, California, the newspaper, reported that officers confiscated the phones of bystanders who had captured the event as it unfolded. Police reportedly arrived at Quare's home to take his phone, the local paper reported. At a news conference at his downtown Bakersfield office, attorney David Cohn, representing the Silva family, said that the videos were vital evidence. He expressed concern about tampering. Those videos that were taken are the most important piece to this case, and another main concern is that those videos aren't altered or destroyed by the Sheriff's Department. And of course the Sheriff's Department is saying that they're looking into it because it is evidence. Um, you know what? Am, am I the only one that takes that with a grain of salt that, yeah, it's it, lying, bold-faced lying. Uh, guys, one thing I am not lying about, check out Nitro a Pack, uh, N-I-T-R-O slash P-A-K. Uh, go to themediaspeaks.com, click directly on this ad. We've got, we don't just have ads now, we have the most awesome of products. I was looking at this and I was floored. The Life Straw personal water filter, you can take like muddy rain water and drink it. $16.96, it's like $25 everywhere else. There's Flame Glass Emergency Cooker Bundle. I've never even heard of that before. It's awesome, $26.99. It's a lot cheaper than other sites I've seen that do this. A lot of places you hear prep or any kind of uh, preparation, it's a bloody fortune. You'd have to be a millionaire to do it. This isn't like that, so make sure you check out Nitro Pack. Um, this is from RT. Furious Bloomberg claims the NYPD is under attack over stop and frisk. I got two Bloomberg stories here for you top 40 fans. That's the uh, mayor of New York. Um, this man is a tyrant in the true sense of the word. Now, I don't necessarily mean that he has the ability to do anything that a tyrant would do. But if you offered him that power, 
he would take it in a second. That man craves power. And he thinks the only way to bring about peace, and I don't necessarily think he's the Antichrist, I, I think there's part of him that wants peace. But what he doesn't understand is the peace he's talking about comes at a very dear price. It comes at the price of everyone giving up their freedoms for a little bit more peace, and it's ridiculous. During a Tuesday speech to New York City Police Department brass, Mayor Michael Bloomberg equated critics of the controversial stop and frisk policy, which is the subject of an ongoing federal lawsuit, with that of an unruly mob. Yeah, you're, you, you, an unruly mob, if you don't want frisked as you walk down the streets of New York. It, it, because it's a metropolis, it's okay for this to happen? Uh, isn't that what Hitler said about Berlin? Stop and Frisk was enacted in 2002, but has drawn public ire in recent months after a federal judge ruled in January that the practice of searching pedestrians without probable cause is unconstitutional. It took a federal judge to make people realize this? How, how could that possibly be? Not only that, but the reason that they're having so much gun problems in New York is because they took guns off of peaceful people and now only the criminals have them. That's why they're having this problem. The NYPD has also been the subject of a civil lawsuit in federal court meant to determine whether patrol officers target minorities and are required to meet monthly arrest quotas. Current and former officers have testified in the affirmative to both counts. Um, I, get, I mean, whether or not they're profiling or not is irrelevant. I don't care what color the person is. I don't care what he's wearing. There's no justification for frisking somebody who's walking down the street. Hard to believe, but the NYPD is under attack, Bloomberg said during the speech on the second floor of police headquarters in downtown Manhattan. Probably because this is an election year. The attacks most often come from people who pay no constructive role in keeping our city safe, but rather view their jobs as pointing fingers to the steps of City Hall. That's because if they don't point their fingers now, by the time you're uh, done, the, the pointing a finger will result in getting your arm cut off. It'll be Sharia law from the Americans' uh, side of it. Bloomberg's third mayoral term comes to an end this year, but the 71-year-old billionaire is going out swinging. He spent months denouncing candidates who have criticized his stance on major issues, although Quinn, a former underlying and city council speaker, largely avoided his scorn before turning face on the administration's stand up and frisk, stop and frisk policy. This is insane. The man wants to, he lost this first one, by the way. He wants to control how much pop you can drink. And those of you that listen to this show know that I talk about the dangers of pop all the time. And if you drink it a lot, I think you're an adult. But I don't think the government has any right to say anything about it at all. And he's just gone on and on and on. It went from gun confiscation and uh, control now to frisking people walking down the street, looking suspicious. You know what? I, I, I've been to New York a few times, so I kind of know how the Matrix is set up. The avenues go in one direction and the streets go in the other. But until I learned that, long hair, walking around aimlessly, looking suspicious, looking lost! Ridiculous. Um, I also want to mention this for those of you that doubt Bloomberg and his, uh, his being uh, tyrannical, as I mentioned earlier. This is also from InfoWars, Steve Watson. Bloomberg, Constitution will have to change. More cameras are needed. Thanks, dictator. New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg has said that the interpretation of the U.N.'s Constitution will have to change in the wake of the Boston terrorist bombings in order to allow for greater security to prevent more attacks. Yeah, you know, it's true. And if you choke on food, then you're going to have to understand that you need to just not eat. And that will prevent that from happening to you. It will. It might completely destroy your life, but oh, it's changed a little bit, right? And if you think this being an, an absurd analogy, they take away your rights to bear arms. Now they're taking away your Fourth Amendment rights. They can frisk you at will. Your First Amendment rights have always been in jeopardy. And somehow people don't see this colossal mess coming together. So yeah, maybe I'll say something totally outrageous, but it's for a purpose. It was uh, Rush Limbaugh, who, eh, I could take or leave, that said all, hu all the best humor is rooted in fact, and it's very true in this instance. 
The people who are worried about privacy have a legitimate worry, Bloomberg said during a press conference in Midtown. But we live in a complex world where you're going to have to have a level of security greater than you did back in the olden days, if you will. And our laws and our interpretation of the Constitution, I think, need to change. Yeah, don't, don't change the Constitution, because you have to amend it then. That actually takes work. You just interpret it different. Ah, the Ruth Bader Ginsburg trick. Look, we live in a very dangerous world where people who want to take away our freedoms. Oh, yeah, like a him. New Yorkers probably know that as much, if not more than anybody else, after the terrible tragedy of 9-11. Even when you factor in 9-11, it's been proven time and time again, you have more of a luck of dying from a bee sting when you do a terrorist attack. And that included if you factored in 11, the, the year that, I mean, 9-11, oh, one, the year it happened. It's an excuse after excuse after excuse to do anything you can to continue to take rights away from people. Um, although, I'm going to go into the next story. This is from the Huffington Post. This I didn't expect, but I like this. I, I, I think that this is something I didn't see coming. And before you say, I think the lazy people need to go back to work, I'm going to preface this, and my main camera's about to die. So, good night, people. Go to the Media Speaks and watch the reposting of the live one. I didn't charge the battery enough. Um, Chicago low-wage workers strike demanding fair pay. Now, before anybody says that I, I'm this screaming liberal for thinking that you should get more money for low-wage jobs, that's not true. I think that there needs to be something done about the disparity of wages. I used to drive for Yellow Cab. The owner is Fred Nero. He is known as the greediest man that ever lived. Uh, sorry, Fred. Um, it's true. You would drive eight, ten hours and take home like $40. Meanwhile, you paid him like 80 or 90 for the car. Um, it was ridiculous. It was awful. I've worked in telemarketing offices where I've brought in thousands of dollars in my paychecks, like $125 a week. Um, obviously now, I mean, I'm DJing, but that's not the point. The point is, I've been in low-wage jobs, and I've worked 40 or 50 hours a week busting ass for absolutely nothing. So, just because I'm a capitalist doesn't mean that I don't think there needs to be some kind of a structure where everything is not lopsided uh, in favor of the people who have the most money. There's a difference between uh, capitalism and corporatism. Um, a, lot, a lot of what we're looking at right now is closer to fascist, fascism than it is uh, communi or, and than it is capitalism. And if you don't believe me, look it up. Uh, fascism is about a lot more than the atrocities committed in World War II. If Hitler had never killed a single Jew, that wouldn't have changed the fact that it's a dictatorship and it was sick and disgusting. And you know we're seeing more and more of that here, Chicago. When Chris Thomas, 25, started working at the Nike store in downtown Chicago in 08, he made ten fifteen an hour, at least a few dollars short of what he'd need to move out of his parents' house in Oak Park, Illinois, Kyle Phillips territory. Over the next two years, his pay rose to eleven seventeen. Then the store shut down for renovations, and he and dozens of other workers were laid off. When it reopened last October, Thomas was one of the lucky ones who had been rehired, he said on Wednesday. However, I didn't feel so lucky when I heard that I would be getting hired in at the bigger, newer, more profitable store for less than I had ever made. He now makes $10 an hour doing the same job he did five years ago, and he still lives at home with his parents. He has... One of, he is one of dozens of low-wage retail and fast food workers who walked off the job in Chicago Wednesday demanding better pay, better treatment, and more reliable hours. Let me, let, me, let me hop in here. Good for him. We just dispelled two rumors. First of all, they say, well, you can't, you can't raise the rates on these people. How much do you want to pay for a cheeseburger? Okay. This is a Nike store. What, you want to pay $100 for Nikes? Wait, you already pay $100 for Nikes. You mean to tell me that you people who buy Nike, Nike shoes, and I, I used to when I was uh, younger, and then when I found out what kind of a company they were, I quit. Um, if you must buy Nikes, buy them used. Um, it's, a, it's, it's insane that you would do this, charge $100, $200 for a pair of gym shoes, and pay somebody this kind of wage. That's, it, it's sickening. So you can't use that argument. The other argument that you can't use is the one that says that he's lazy. 
He's obviously not lazy if he's been hounding this hard just to keep this job. So there are two uh, assumptions right there that are shot clearly out of the water just by this story. Um, they say low-skilled workers, Thomas said, but we're helping generate billions of dollars in profits. We're not trying to get 